my talk this afternoon is very much motivated by topics that have dominated so many headlines and also topics of so many talks, conferences, seminars, fora, including, of course, uh, this one. The first, I think you've heard a lot this morning and also this afternoon about digital disruption, something that we are all having to live with, something that has transformed our lives, transformed the way we do things, transformed our relationships with other people, transformed our relationships with organizations and our place in society. But the other topic that has dominated so many headlines, and I think it's now dominating very much the topic of political dialogue, is the issue of inequality. We live in an age where there now appears to be unprecedented level of inequality, whether you measure it from the point of view of wealth, income, disparities between urban areas, rural areas, geographical disparity, and so on. And this inequality is obviously creating tensions, conflicts, and could very much lead many societies and countries into a full-blown political, economic, or social crisis. Indeed, I think for the first time in a number of decades, the market system or the capitalist system is now being questioned whether it is able to deliver the good life for ordinary people. And the issue of inequality is something that now is giving rise to the search for maybe even alternative models or systems of development. 20, 30 years ago, who would have thought that people would begin to talk about the ideals of socialism again? But it is now here today dominating the political dialogue in so many countries simply because the degree of inequality has risen very fast. That's why I decided, why don't we try to make technology a tool to solve the problem of inequality? Make technology egalitarian. My focusing in particular on this issue of technology and egalitarianism, because I believe that we are now, we are now living in an age where we have unprecedented tools. The technology has created so many tools at our disposal. Can we use these tools to achieve a more equal society, a better society for everybody? Now, obviously, there are a number of, of opportunities that are already being explored and exploited that will help reduce the problem of inequality. So, for instance, in the area of health, we know that technology has now opened up so many possibilities in bringing better health care, maybe to more remote areas, uh, having technology that will be able to respond better to the health needs of people, even to identify problems and using data and algorithm perhaps to prevent outbreak of diseases and so on. Just to give you a, a quick picture of what's going on, say, in Thailand now, with all the health tech companies or the startups, Clearly, all of these uh, companies are trying to respond to some of the health needs in the various areas of our society. In the area of uh, the economy, and if you think in particular of the rural economy, because usually, uh, certainly in Thailand, we have always found that rural income, farmers' income, are always uh, the lowest in our society. Again. Uh, we now have technology that will help our farmers. Uh, there are so many projects now under the heading of Smart Farmer. So uh, they can deal with the risk, say, from the uh, unpredictable weather. They can improve upon the quality of the soil, uh, access to water, uh, maybe creating value from their products. Likewise, in the industrial and services sector, technology is opening up opportunities also for small and medium enterprises. In the area of education, again, we've heard uh, a number of initiatives, I think this morning already, about how we can improve upon our education system. So that, again, will bring up the skills, the ability of our people to reach their potential. And yet, we are also very much aware of what we call the digital divide. 
technology is available to society, to mankind, but obviously there are gaps. We are all aware of the problems of infrastructure, remote areas to have struggling to have the same kind of uh, services, the same kind of access to technology as in the more developed areas. We are also aware that in order to be able to benefit from technology, you need the necessary skills. And again, the skills gap can then uh, exacerbate the degree of inequality when technology becomes available. But what I'm concerned about the inequality uh, that I'm going to talk about today is not about these issues. It's something that I think is more fundamental and it's inherent in the development of technology that, that we need to be concerned about. Because I believe that unless we redesign some of our systems about how we allow technology to play its role in our society, there is a real threat that technology will not be a force for equality, but rather can actually contribute to increased inequality. Why is that? Well, it's going to be quite difficult to summarize it in one word or in one concept. But the nearest that I think I can come to is this problem of monopoly. So what I'm saying is, strictly it may not be a monopoly, it could be a duopoly, it could be an oligopoly, but the problem is, in the structure of our economy, the degree of concentration of economic power has increased, which means more power is now in the hands of fewer people. And there are a number of aspects about the technology that is contributing, contributing to that. The first is big data, because information and data are the most important assets of the new economy, of the digital economy. Who is in possession of big data? Governments and the big corporates. And who is able to collect most of the information and data? Again, governments and the big corporates. You yourself, I think all of us here, have experienced daily the people taking data about ourselves. Who are they? Government agencies, when you seek, apply permissions, apply for some uh, benefits for programs. And also, of course, when you are shopping online, you are conducting transactions online, the big corporates are collecting this data. And they're using that for a number of purposes, maybe commercial purposes. Government agencies obviously have individual and specific purposes for collecting your data. But often this is abused. And there is now a, a real concern that this asymmetry of power as far as the ability to collect, retain and use information will make our societies even more unequal. I know that there are so many people who have worked in the startups in the areas of education, health, agriculture, trying to help the SMEs and so on. One of their biggest complaints that they have made to me is that they want to have more information, more data. But the people who have the data, mostly government agencies, simply will not make them available. And that is holding them back from the ability to provide better services to the people who need these services. So, number one, we need to do something about how we manage data. Who can collect them? Who can control them? who can use them, and for what purposes. The second aspect of technology, which may be conducive to increased inequality, is the problem of the need for networks, physical or virtual. Now, even before the digital age, we have already seen that any industry, any services that rely on networks, so perhaps telecommunications, power, those people who control the networks, the pipelines, the infrastructure, can often extract so much value because they are in a position of monopoly. Well, 
in this day and age of uh, the digital economy, again, the people who control the network have incredible power. And this is then translated into a reinforcement of people who are in advantageous position already. So we're not just talking about physical network. Think about the digital communities. Think about the social media platforms. Well, um, I suspect most of you are on Facebook. Think about it. I've heard so many times in the last few years when people become unhappy, maybe about Facebook's policy, dude, how much of a choice do they have in shifting away from an, an entrenched or an established um, social network or social platform? There isn't that much choice. What we see instead also is that there is more and more consolidation by the people who own these networks to be able to merge with other platforms to create an even bigger uh, platform for themselves. Just like uh, in the offline world, many producers are frustrated that they make very good products, but in order to reach consumers, they either have to rely on the modern retail network, again, in the hands of the few, or now maybe the digital network increasingly also in the hands of the few. This structure of the economy is not one that will help us achieve greater equality in our society. The third, this one is actually created by governments and by laws. That is, we have given monopolistic rights in the form of intellectual property rights to people who invent. Now, obviously, I am very well aware that this system is in place to give incentives for people to engage in research, to invent, to innovate, because they need to have their returns. Uh, I am not arguing for no intellectual property rights, but I am pointing out that the current regime of intellectual property rights protection oftentimes does not actually achieve its purpose. Many people in the health sector are frustrated that patents become obstacles for trying to do further research to perhaps invent or discover new drugs. And we also see, I wouldn't say abuse, but the use of intellectual property rights, which tries basically to just retain monopoly rights. So we have uh, old drugs, small changes, longer lifetime for patents. Now, all of this uh, can hold um, development back and is clearly just creating rents or value for people who have those monopoly rights. And with the areas of research that are taking place, uh, again, we have to question wh uh, whether these researches will actually help the majority of people. Why? Take health again as an example. We now have a lot of money and resources being poured in to do uh, um, research, maybe uh, what would be called precision medicine, what would be called services that are customized uh, to specific people, maybe uh, using the study of genomes and so on. Now, just one easy question. Who do you think will be able to afford those kinds of services? Mostly, it will be the wealthy and the well-off. Now, my talk is also motivated by observations in the past when we have had famines. When we have had famines in the past, people who have done research on this discovered that in those places where people are actually dying because, there is, uh, because they cannot eat, they don't have any food to eat, in those very areas, there is often a surplus of food. And even today, you know, some countries throw out a third of their food. Did you know that? While there is still chronic hunger and undernourishment for so many people in the world. Why is that? Because basically, food does not go to the hungry. Where does food go? It goes to the people who can afford it. 
we must not allow technology to follow the same route. We must try to redesign a new system to make sure that the technology that is available to us can serve everybody, not just the few. So just a few quick ideas. First, to deal with big data, this principle of open data must be uh, demanded. We should have uh, clear guidelines about the rules about who can collect data, who can retain data, who can then use that data, and for what purposes, with the issue of privacy and so on being protected as well. If we have an open data system at the national level, even better at the global level, I'm sure we will unleash so much potential for people who have the knowledge, the skills, the imagination to want to use technology and have access to this kind of data. And it will create a much, much more level playing field so that we are more likely to have an equal society. Second, in terms of network, we have to demand more open access, which means that the owners of the networks, the owners of some kind of advantage, must be under some kind of rules to allow others to tap into those resources and networks so that they too can create value, they too can create competition. Indeed, I would argue that the competition laws that we have all over the world and you know, antitrust laws, whatever you want to call them, as, as, are, are based on a rather outdated mode of reality. It used to be uh, concerned with you know, merging and being a dominant player in one market. And some solutions that are often proposed by these laws would be to break up monopolies. That's not the kind of problem that we are facing now. We are facing uh, cross-industry, cross-platform mergers, we are uh, dealing with the issues of vertical integration. We don't want to break things up, but we want to make sure that the competition is fair, that there is a chance for new players to come in, that everybody can become served, not just the ones that are uh, in a wealthy position. And we need a new design for IPR protection and also research allocation. As I say, we shouldn't be taking away incentives but the incentives may have to take a different form. So for instance, could it be the case that now governments would have to put in some resources to help with the researchers with the condition that once the innovations actually take place and they can be beneficial to people, they should be made available at low cost. This is very clear in the case of drugs. And uh, if you look at the history, it is, there's always been a long fight about making even life-saving drugs available to people. But we ran into problems of uh, intellectual property protection. So there you have it. You, know, you have a problem where there will be so many needs and needy people on the one hand, and some people obviously with the resources, with the money. Can we make sure? that eventually we can merge this, not allow technology to create things and just go to the high uh, income, wealthy people and high values, but also serving everybody. For me, I think it's time that we make technology egalitarian, make technology a force for equity and justice. And we must change some of the rules and redesign our systems to make sure that it happens. Thank you.